We have come to the time when we need to lose the training wheels, but we want to do it without having some terrible wrecks. Let's recall that the job of proof is to preserve truth and offer insight, but we also need to share our proofs with others. These factors almost always lead to presenting proofs in English. To emphasize this, let's consider an example. Here's a small logic problem requiring a proof. It is called asleep in class. Alice is in class. If Tom is asleep, then it is not true that Alice is in class and Bob did his homework. If anyone is in class, then everyone did the homework. Thus, it isn't true that everyone is asleep. To prove this in the very formal fashion we call a four-column proof, we begin by attaching symbols to some of the sentences. Then we encode the premises and also the conclusion we seek. The four-column proof then proceeds like we see here. Were we to render this in a very straightforward English fashion, the proof might sound like this. Alice is in class is a premise. By existential generalization, it follows that there exists someone who is in class. If someone is in class, then everyone has done his or her homework is a premise. From those two statements and modus ponens, it follows that everyone did his or her homework. Thus, from universal instantiation, in particular, Bob did his homework. No one is going to stay awake for this. So let's try something like this. Since Alice is in class, everyone, including Bob, did the homework. But since Alice is in class and Bob did his homework, it can't be true that Tom is asleep. Thus, it isn't true that everyone is asleep. Let's notice the major differences with this second, less formal version of the English proof. There is no explicit reference to using the generalization rules or the instantiation rules or quantifier exchange. Those things will become second nature. We didn't mention the modus ponens or modus tollens rules either. We certainly didn't mention something as basic as addition. There was no reference to particular line numbers since there were no line numbers in our alternative proof. Lastly, and most importantly, this version sounds like English. Now let's do a more numerical proof example. We want to prove for every integer n the quantity n square, when divided by 4, has remainder 0 or 1. Before beginning, let's recall the notation n mod 4 just means the remainder when n is divided by 4. Here is our proof. Either n is even or odd. First, let's assume n is even. Then n is equal to 2k for some integer k. But then n square is equal to 4k square, and n square mod 4 is equal to 4k square mod 4, which is equal to 0 since 4k square is a multiple of 4. Alternatively, n is odd. Then n is equal to 2k plus 1 for some integer k. But then n square is equal to 4k square plus 4k plus 1. And n square mod 4 is equal to the quantity 4k square plus 4k plus 1 mod 4. But that is equal to 4 times the quantity k square plus k plus 1 mod 4, and that is equal to 1 since 
4 times the quantity k squared plus k plus 1 is one more than a multiple of 4. So n mod 4 is either 0 or 1. So what do real proofs look like? Well, first, they rarely look like four-column proofs. They sound like English, although perhaps a bit stilted English, with many more therefores, senses, thuses, henses, and such used than we regularly observe. Some important characteristics are, they are written extremely clearly without ambiguities. They avoid getting so bogged down in the details that the main reason why our conclusion must be true is obscured. They're often a lot shorter. Sometimes we skip a large number of rather obvious steps. Generally, the rules of Boolean and predicate logic are not explicitly referenced. On the other hand, when major theorems are applied, that is mentioned. Again, as we remove the training wheels, there is the real possibility of getting into wrecks. It must still be the case that every step must correspond to correct reasoning. Further, if challenged, we must be able to fill in the details of any omitted steps. Thus the request, I don't see how you got from statement X to statement Y, please explain, is always fair game. In fact, it is in response to this very question that we often find gaps in our logic. By the way, the concern with avoiding wrecks is real. Many students are quite capable of perfectly obeying the rules of Boolean and predicate logic proofs, but crash when they try to do the less formal English proofs. They employ what we often call hand-waving arguments, in which motions of the appendages are supposed to substitute for rigor. If this were not so common for students, we would not be belaboring the issue. Students often ask, if there is a test that can be applied to determine if an English proof is valid, we know that there exist tools for checking the formal four-column proofs. Are there such tools for English proofs? The sad truth is that there are currently no such tools. About the best procedure we have is to show the proof to colleagues and see if they can follow it without saying, how did you do this step? Finally, I'd like to show you my favorite problem and its English proof. A single elimination tournament determines a winner on the basis of matches. In each match, there is exactly one winner and one loser. Any team losing a match immediately leaves the tournament. The tournament winner is the single team that remains after all others have lost. Notice there is no assumption about the structure of the games. There could be seedings, a ladder, a balanced tree, or other structures employed. We seek to prove that to determine the winner of a single elimination tournament of n teams, exactly n minus 1 matches are required. Here's the proof. After each of n minus 1 games, one team is eliminated. At the end of the n minus 1 games, all but one team has been eliminated. The tournament is over and the remaining team is the winner. Notice, the proof is that simple. There is no reference to any particular structure because there need not be. That would simply complicate the presentation. This proof is simply pure insight. To reiterate, an English proof is a concise explanation of a valid argument. But when you write an English proof, you must be prepared to defend every step if you're challenged to do so.